everybody, thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcogiani with another great conversation at Trumpa Health and Wellness Center. Today we're going to talk about glyphosate. We're going to dive into what is glyphosate, what happens when we consume it, how to avoid it, and then how do we repair from glyphosate when consumed. Let's dive in. So this is a really important topic. It's kind of a buzz topic in mainstream media, so I wanted to discuss this today. Uh, there's been a lot of attention with glyphosate, or more commonly known as Roundup, and the association with General Mills and uh, having some of their various products found with levels of glyphosate. So that's kind of important and a little bit of a buzz topic why I wanted to talk about this. Also with the connection that if we look up glyphosate, we start uh, reading about it, the connection with, um, with autism, with celiac disease, and with some uh, neuro, some neurocognitive diseases or cognitive dysfunctions such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, and obviously autism, which we just mentioned there earlier, but some possible theorized concepts. So that's another reason why I wanted to talk about this. So really, what is glyphosate? It really, what it is, is the main ingredient in Roundup. Roundup is the most commonly used herbicide on the planet. Uh, in 19, let's, we'll bring it a little bit closer to more to the U.S. In 1987, it was the 16th most, most used herbicide in the United States. Since 2001, it has been now known as the most commonly used herbicide in the U.S. And the United States actually consumes 25% of the world's, pop, uh, you know, world's production of glyphosate. The United States consumes 25, 25% of that. Uh, also, so what, what else does glyphosate do? Mainly the main thing is that it's a weed killer. It prevents weed from growing on the crop and destroying the crop. Uh, how does this work is it influences what's called the shikimate pathway uh, this is one of the reasons why the ag business thinks it's not a major concern because the shikimate pathway only influences is only in plants and it can only influence that pathway which is only found in plants but we'll talk about a little bit of a, ca a caveat that we have something living living in us that needs the shikimate pathway so now we're going to talk about consuming glyphosate what happens here so really important to understand the reason why we increased that glyphosate production from 1987 to 2001 because the plants were becoming more glyphosate resistant, meaning they needed more to spray on the plant in order for the weed to be killed. Not only that, they found that they needed to add another ingredient into the concoction as well, and that's the, the 2,4-D, which is a common ingredient in Agent Orange, which is a chemical that we use in Vietnam uh, to, to poison to poison the enemy. So not only now are we consuming glyphosate, we're consuming a component of Agent Orange um, that has been sprayed on the on the herbicides. And just so we're clear, I want to give a little bit of a shout out here to uh, Stephanie Seneff, who is the um, who is one of the leaders in research and information on glyphosate. She's a researcher in MIT. Uh, if you want to find out additional information or a really good uh, PubMed research article is going to be uh, by Stephanie Seneff and Anthony Sam Samsel. Uh, you can just Google those two names and glyphosate and that PubMed article will be the first one will pop up. So what is going on when we consume glyphosate. So the big thing here is that it's known as a common endocrine, endocrine disruptor. Um, a lot of these concepts are still are still not 100% um, confirmed because a lot of it is in vivo in vi and in vitro studies. Um, so consume, a lot of them would be run on rats, but the evidence is pretty strong here. Um, so mainly it being an endos endocrine disruptor, meaning that it's going to be carcinogenic and teratogenic, uh, meaning cancers are linked to the consumption of this. Uh, they found that uh, breast cancer, um, various uh, kidney tumors, and prostate cancers have been linked to the consumption of glyphosate. So it has that endocrine disrupting effect, uh, which influencing our hormones and creating uh, tumors and creating tumor growth. Uh, next aspect here is the gut bacteria in the connection with the shikimate pathway. So like we talked about that, that pathway is only in plants, 
but we have a lot of bacteria in our stomach. We have a huge amount of bacteria which uh, significantly outgrows, uh, outnumbers the amount of genes that we have compared to bacteria. And this bacteria is crucial uh, that it runs off the shikimate pathway. So we're really harming our bacteria and we're shifting our bacteria to we have significantly dysbiotic bacteria and creating intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So that's one major issue there. Also, it's a metal chelation. It's no, it's, uh, glyphosate is known to do metal chelation. Um, fun fact that it actually has been shown to actually key, uh, to pull or strip metal, but that's another aspect. Um, so what it does is it can chelate various, uh, various elements such as zinc, copper, iron, uh, which some of those aspects are really crucial into our body. It also can, uh, not so crucial to our body, can uh, chelate aluminum and arsenic. And if we don't have correct detoxification pathways or we don't have correct liver detox, the liver can effectively break these down and now we're forcing the kidneys to have to filter out the aluminum and the arsenic, which can create a lot of kidney dysfunction and uh, just wreak havoc on the kidneys. So that's another aspect. Also, if we're if we're having uh, significant amounts of aluminum uh, chelated and we're unable to filter them or uh, detoxify them correctly, we can start having deposits uh, in the blood-brain barrier, which you know is the connection that people are talking about with autism, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease. Another connection here is the inactivation of the P450 pathway. This is really crucial releasing various enzymes. And this is one of the connections that they're thinking that celiac disease, while that's becoming so prominent or has been becoming prominent in the past decade, is that we don't, that the glyphosate is interfering with the release of these enzymes that are really crucial for the breakdown of gliadin, which is the, uh, the gluten protein um, in various wheats and in, in, uh, wheat, barley, rye, etc. Um, also that the depletion of manganese is really uh, a strong connection here. So that, that shikimate pathway, the reason why it interferes uh, in plants, glyphosate interferes with the plants in that pathway is because it chelates manganese. And manganese helps to run that shikimate pathway. So not only if we can we consume glyphosate, does it uh, destroy uh, manganese from the plant or chelate uh, manganese from the plant, but it also will chelate manganese from our body, which is manganese is really crucial in a couple of things. Um, it's really important for chondroitin sulfate, which is uh, the, it's a precursor to help make chondroitin sulfate, which chondroitin sulfate influences our joints. It influences the perineural structure around the brain, so it helps for the brain support. Uh, manganese is really important for down-regulating glutamate, so we don't have glutamate excitotoxicity, which can drive uh, neurocognitive issues. It's really important for mitochondrial repair. So we now have enough energy, enough mitochondria uh, to pump out more ATP and energy. So that's really important, the, the fact of, of manganese. Also, glyphosate is going to deplete lactobacillus, which is really important for gut health. Again, another connection to gut health there. And then glyphosate is going to deplete our sulfate, our sulfate pathway, which is really important for proper detoxification, good, uh, really important for proper blood flow and joint repair. So really something to be aware of. So how do we avoid it? Um, it sounds simple enough, but it'd be, you know, be amazed that people still consume these things is that we want to avoid conventionally grown corn, soy, canola oil, cotton, alfalfa, and sugar beets. Um, those are really important to avoid because they're the most commonly conventionally grown uh, or genetically modified, excuse me, genetically modified, and, and therefore the most heavily sprayed with Roundup. Um, so trying to clean, consume an organic, uh, an organic diet is as crucial as possible. Um, with a caveat, organic foods are still going to be sprayed with some level of glyphosate. They have been found to have a level of glyphosate, but significantly lower than your uh, conventionally, con uh, your genetically modified uh, foods, which have been sprayed heavily with, with Roundup. And those, as you can see here, tomato, summer squash, um, the salmon, conventionally raised salmon, not wild caught, um, sugar beets, soy, uh, canola oil, these are all 
uh, very gen heavily sprayed and genetically modified foods. So how do we repair and heal from glyphosate? So again, eating really organic and eating really clean. We want to supplement with manganese because it's being chelated. We want to make sure we're supplementing with iron and zinc because that's another aspect that's being chelated. We want to consume good probiotics such as lactobac lactobacillus because that's another aspect that glyphosate interferes with. We want to make sure we're uh, consuming essential amino acids. We're consuming tryptophan and tyrosine and phenylalanine. We want to make sure we're consuming high sulfur amino foods because it chelates sulfur. That one, uh, the main one being methionine, which is really important, uh, is an essential sulfur-containing amino acid, and glycine, which is another important aspect um, that can help with neuro uh, neurocognitive issues as well if it's low. Also, consuming uh, something that's going to help possibly chelate the glyphosate. There's some uh, there's some debate about that if glyphosate can be chelated once consumed. But the use of humic and fulvic acid is very helpful in the chelation uh, of various uh, various toxins in, in, in theorized glyphosate. Also, using high amounts of glutathione that help along with the sulfur amino acid to help push that detoxification. We talked about a probiotic and then using some digestive repair to help uh, the intestinal permeability or the leaky gut that had been caused by that glyphosate. Really, really important aspects. Well, I thank you, I thank you for your time today. Uh, my main goal is to be able to provide information so you can make informed decisions on your health. I hope this was helpful. If you know anyone that can benefit from this information, please share this and have a wonderful day.